Hey guys, Brian here. Welcome to part three of building the manual transmission. This really should be part one because you can see we're finally getting serious and finally getting somewhere. And Eric the Pool Boy broke it apart into several PDFs and this is the first PDF. Now I haven't finished everything completely. Namely, these four pieces should be glued together as one. Set screws should be tightened and all that, but I haven't. But everything else, including cutting the rods to the right lengths, at least putting the set screws in, putting the nuts in, and inserting the washers in between these parts is done. So I know, well I don't know, but I think it's going to work out. So, I'm going to show you how I got this far, and hopefully it'll help you out when you build your own. First, make sure to print out all the parts necessary for section 1. From the right hand side, we've got the input shaft, front bearing retainer, transmission housing 1, gear 1 top, the first set of shift collar and shift collar gear, gear 2 top, gear 3 top, the second set of shift collar and shift collar gear, and finally gear 4 top. Now on the second bottom shaft, we're going to have the gear 1 counter shaft, the gear 2 counter shaft, the gear 3 counter shaft, and the gear 4 counter shaft. Make sure that your shift collars smoothly go around the shift collar gears as well as the adjacent pieces. Next, let's check that all of our printed pieces go smoothly onto the top and bottom shafts. Oh, this one felt a little tight, so what you can actually do is use perhaps a rotary tool to shave off the excess on the inside. Another trick I've done is once I've got the lip of the holes large enough to fit, I just twist and keep twisting until it pops out from the other side. That pushes out the excess PLA that you can see and trim off on the inside. And then you can repeatedly, whoa, <laughs> you can repeatedly pull the rod in and out to make it smoother. So test every piece make sure they fit properly and smoothly a couple of these feel a little rough so I'm going to have to work on them but at this point the ordering of what I'm putting together doesn't matter we're just making sure that it's going to work in the end and that's when the ordering will count now the bottom shaft the four pieces are going to be actually glued together so make sure they are really smooth we might not have a chance to go back but for right now, we're not going to glue them. We're just testing them out. After we check that all the parts go smoothly on the bottom and the top shaft, now we're going to actually check whether the bearings fit properly. And all the parts that have little pockets should get a bearing each. So here I've got all the parts necessary. And if the holes don't fit the bearings, you might have to trim off a little excess. Uh, this one was the recent one I did and it's a little tight. You can use a clockwise motion to cut and a counterclockwise motion to clean up. But then we'll simply take the parts and stuff the bearings in. The front bearing retainer takes one out here and on the back it has two slots and they don't go all the way down as far as I know. I guess we'll find out. I'm building this with you guys so we'll see if these instructions hold up. 
For gear one top, there's only one. The next gear has two slots. The next one also has two. That one felt a little loose. Maybe I cut too much. And there you go. Now we go back to the transmission housing to do a little work here. I've attached the front bearing retainer and I've actually put in the screws after testing the rods and the bearings. On the back side there are two sockets for bearings and these were part of the front bearing retainer. Two bearings were sticking out halfway so you might have to clean the holes up over here to make sure the bearings uh, pop through properly. I also checked that these two holes here properly accept the rods so I cleaned up the model there and I went through every hole on the transmission housing and made sure that screws would work and there are a couple down here on the bottom too Next, we'll have to install the set screws and nuts. You'll see that a lot of the pieces have two slots. Those are where the nuts are going to go. And on the side, they have little holes where the set screws go. And these set screws are very tiny. They don't have the heads. I don't even know if you can see this in my hand. But they go on the side. One side of the set screw has a little opening for a small allen wrench to hook on. Once you've carved away enough to get the nut in, I had to do a little bit of dremeling, you can put the set screw in and tighten it. Some of these pieces, if you tilt them sideways, you'll see when the screw begins to appear. And here I've never tightened them all the way. I just want to again prove that it'll work. Once I put all the rods, I won't have a chance or glue all the pieces together. I won't have a chance to um, use the Dremel tool to make the holes bigger or anything. So make sure they work. And actually all these holes, uh, I didn't need to put do any additional work to get the set screws. But some of these nuts that are part of the first layer of the model were a little bit uh, small, so I had to open them up. The next step is to cut the two rods we had and make them into the top shaft, the bottom shaft, and the input shaft. And actually, the bottom shaft is also called the counter shaft. And what I did here is I just wrote down the lengths from Eric the Pool Boy's spreadsheet, used a ruler, marked it with a pen, then I swapped out the cutting blade from the one I used to shave off the excess on all the parts to something that could cut the metal. And make sure you have some hand protection, eye protection, and ear protection. And then on a steady surface, Turn it on and cut it. And I gently kind of score the rod first. I scratch it all around and I slowly work my way inside and cut it off. But yeah, make sure to wear protection. You can kind of see why I'll briefly demonstrate. It'll spark, so. Okay, after all that's said and done, we can start putting things together to see if it might work in the end. I didn't really glue anything. I'm not going to tighten any screws. I just want to see that it works before I move on to section 2. We'll all get to the final um, tightening and all that at the end. So, I've already put the four pieces on the bottom shaft. And... The diagram by Eric the Pool Boy, which I'll link below, actually has a washer here, 
I'm actually not sure what it does yet. Maybe I've got it wrong. But I'm going to insert that into the bottom of the manual transmission and push it up. Then I have the input shaft and the actual, I guess the input shaft shaft, I, sh I guess you could say. Put that there so it's flush. Insert it into the top shaft area all the time. A little bit sticks out. Then I'm going to take the gear one. Stick it in there. Then I guess I'll try to build this on the, on the shaft itself. Put in a washer. And then another washer following the gear. And I'm just going to keep continuing. Two washers following that gear. Put another washer, followed by a shift collar and a shift collar gear. Finally, the final washer of this area. Well, there's one more washer to put here, but I'm not going to do that now because it would just fall off. Then move these all up to the rod and Sneak it in there. And there you go. You've assembled section one. Now there's things, gears that should be moving and things that aren't moving together, but that's because we haven't glued and tightened everything together. But we're on a good track to completing the manual transmission. All right, if you made it this far, thank you very much. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later. See ya.